So here we go in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, January 9, 2023. This is Molly Jones, Chair of the Building and Contracts Committee. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the Chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Thea or myself if you must leave the call by using the team's chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Fayer, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Evening. Ms. Jose? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Ms. Hen? Present. Ms. Jose, there are three. Thank you, Ms. Fayer. Ms. Fay, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Um, Mr. Pedro Agosto? Present. Mr. Chris Hartlove? Here. Ms. Bogart Ann Haley? Here. Mr. James Corns? Mr. Pradeep Dixit? Present. Present. Dr. Melissa Wistead? Present. Dr. Grimm? Present. Mr. Merrill Plate? Here. Ms. Melanie Webster? Ms. Melanie Webster? Ms. Michelle Sansbury? Present. Thank you. Are there any other, I'm sorry, are there any other um, staff participating that were not mentioned? Please state your names now. Uh, Dr. McComas, I'm here on behalf of the first contract with Dr. Wistad and Ms. Stansbury. Thank you. Hey, Dr. McComas. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fayo. Good evening, everybody, once again, and Happy New Year to everybody. Mr. Hartlow, please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract. Uh, sure thing. Um, good evening. My name is Chris Hartlow. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Baltimore County Public Schools. First uh, contract is LKO-403-19, Transportation of Selected Students and Employees. This contract modification will provide for the continued use of transportation services for the office offices of Title I and Transportation. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by 2.5 million, bringing the revised total to $9,275,000. Uh, this contract provides transportation for displaced students under the McKinney Vinto Homeless Assistance Act and students with special needs as a related service on their IEP. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? I Please one, state Rose. your name. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Han. Thanks, Ms. Rose. Um, is the modification requested to increase the authority? Spending authority, is that the only modification? I believe so, yes. Thanks, and Happy New Year, Mr. Hartlove. Nice to see you. Thank you, you too. Thank you, so it is for that. Um, and do you know if that's, I have a follow-up then based on your answer. Sure. Um, are, are we um, increasing the number of students serviced and is that the reason for the increase? Or do you have any background information or perhaps staff do that are with us? Um, I believe, and I think we have staff online, but I'll take a first pass at it. Um, when we first uh, uh, brought this contract forward, the uh, community schools uh, grant was not um, 
uh, this is significant as it is now, and we're utilizing uh, quite a bit of of, of the dollars for the uh, community uh, community schools grant. And I can I add on as well? Thank you sure. so much, Sister Star. Sure, sure. You were actually um, yeah, that's better than me actually. It, it's <laughs> fine. It's totally fine. Um, the other piece is that we received um, American Rescue Plan funds to provide additional supports for students who are experiencing homelessness, and with those funds, we have provided. Um, almost immediate transportation access to and from school until a permanent transportation route is identified for students who are experiencing homelessness but um, no longer residing in the area um, where the school the student attends is. So that additional funding has increased the use of the service. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, it was my understanding, however, that we're required to provide transportation to homeless students. So if yeah. if you wouldn't mind expanding on what's changed, it's great that we have these additional funds. Don't get me wrong. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. But it, we are required. In fact, the only students were required by law to provide transportation service to are homeless students, I believe. So what what well, has changed that now we're providing it? We're always required to provide it. Yes, yeah, so I can speak to um, the expansion of that, and that is that um, we have we create about a five to um, ten day turnaround to establish a full transportation route for students who are experiencing homelessness. And while um, we work really really hard with the Office of Transportation team. Um, even missing two days of school can set a child behind. And so what this does is give them temporary immediate access and um, the cost for the transportation for students experiencing homelessness can be absorbed by both the district and grant funds. So it's simply um, getting the access a lot faster until a more permanent solution is found and we have found it to be very beneficial. The other um, opportunity that we're providing is families and students who are in extracurricular activities or attending family events or concerts or things of that sort, really had difficult attending those activities outside of the school day, simply because they would be transported home and then would need transportation back to school and they did not have that. So we have established an opportunity to provide those families and students with access to after school and extracurricular activities as well. Thank you, and, uh, and this will be my last question, I'm sorry. Um, are we providing that to just to those students um, experiencing homelessness or are we providing that to um, students with difficulty returning or having you know transportation needs to return for extracurricular activities? any that so, have been identified as in need. I can speak to Title I schools only, and I welcome the rest of the team to share about others, but um, we specifically do provide that service for our families experiencing homelessness. Centrally, we pay for that, but then at the school level, schools use school-based funding to pay, I can speak only about Title I and community school funding, to pay um, to support their families who really don't have a means of getting back and forth for extracurricular and after school events or evening events. And it's really based on need. Um, so it's it's lots of our schools dedicate funding specifically for that purpose. Thank you, because this came up by um, Mrs. Hassan raised this at the board's meeting with um, Rec and Parks. The, the needs for transportation services um, for students and could we work with Rec and Parks to provide transportation to those centers. And so I th this was a potential area of collaboration. So I'd be um, interested in the board receiving more information about how we identify those students and what services we can provide under this contract. And Dr. McComas, if you want to jump in and add, it looked like you had something to add. Oh, thank you, Ms. Hen. Um, I thank was you. just going to 
to say, and um, Ms. Stansberry, correct me if I if I need to be corrected by all means. Um, I believe our community schools, as part of their needs assessment, if if one of the things that they identify um, for their their community is an after school activity bus, that also could be one of the um, resources that they use their community schools fund for. And again, Ms. Stansberry, please correct me always if I'm if I'm not oh, no. saying the the truth totally here. Right. So, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, Perfect. so just the same as Hen, that there there is a multiple sort of access points uh, for schools depending upon what re what funding they are eligible for. You know, community schools is a huge resource. Title One's a huge resource, and of course, all of us want to make sure our students who are experiencing homelessness is have every opportunity um, to engage fully in school and extracurricular uh, while they're making their transition, hopefully to no longer being uh, experiencing homelessness. So. Thank you, so thank you for be, the opportunity. It would be helpful to to know the number of students that are receiving service under this contract. If that's information the board could receive prior to tom tomorrow's meeting, that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. So this is uh, Robin Harvey. Go and ahead, I just want to make sure that I'm clear. How is everyone? Happy New Year. <laughs> um, this modification is being re requested to provide gap transportation services for students experiencing homelessness while their permanent transportation plan is being set up. This is so that there is no disruption in their schooling at all. I in, believe that's a part to, of it. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> in addition, there's also um, the after school as Ms. Hen was discussing there's the after school transportation, but that is directly connected to stu students who fall into the McKinney Vento category. Is that what I heard? That's a part of is, it. Am I, I missing just... another category of right? Okay, right. what's the other part? <laughs> Jess, do you want to share the other side well, of it as well? Certainly. So th this this contract is really provides for kids that are that are experiencing homelessness, families that are experiencing homelessness, and students with disabilities. It is it is limited um, in scope for for students that fall in, in those categories. Um, it is uh, intended in part to provide that gap that Ms. Stansberry very eloquently described and explained. Um, there's also as part of this process, um, some students that are that are homeless are transported great distances and in order to um, to make sure they have a more stable experience, uh, the office of Title One at times will work with that student in the office of transportation to maintain this service over a longer period of time. So it's not just for gap. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Yes, uh, LLY-411-22 modification consulting and technical services. This contract modification will provide the continued consulting and technical services for the Division of Human Resources and Information Technology. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $1,220,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $1,620,000. And we Thank have, you, Mr. Uh, Hartlow. Sure, go ahead. Sure. I was going to say we have members of uh, the IT IT staff, Mr. Agosto. If uh, you have any follow up questions, committee members, any questions? If you do, please put it in the chat or raise your hand. Uh, go ahead, Miss Hen. Just for the record, Mr. McMillian, are you online? Yes, yes, yes. I just called in at five sixteen. Thank you, Miss. Faye, please note that for the record. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mr. Augusto. Um, if you could please speak in general to this modification and why it's mm -hmm. necessary. Thank sure. you. Sure. So happy new year, Ms. Hen. So and everyone else on the happy call. New year. Um, yeah, so this is uh, just for a little bit of background. Um, this was consulting services to, in support of the HRS. So in addition to the work that DOIT is doing on 
day-to-day -day steady state operations for HR systems. Um, this contract is for consulting services to provide uh, support for additional work. So for example, we're um, <clears throat> about to undertake, I'll call it a gap analysis. We're identifying, documenting all of the HR processes, the business processes, um, defining the as is, and then uh, from there, identifying areas where we have manual processing, any areas where we could find efficiencies through automation, and then putting together a plan, working with the OIT at that point to implement those changes, uh, to automate those functions that are currently manual. Um, so this is supplemental staff uh, to help with the consulting and analysis that is um, needed for that. And then also, as we go through the tail end of the year, um, any of the, the documentation that were done for business processes will be um, instrumental and key into any of the work that we're doing moving forward as we're uh, looking at our uh, review of our ERP uh, vendor um, services. Um, this is information that's sorely needed to be documented, um, which we're, you know, first phase is to get all this um, as is process documented uh, with the intent of automating and improving efficiencies in HR. Thank you. That's in incredibly helpful um, to know. And I'm imagining that in our recovery from um, the cyber attack, that was not the time to go through business process consulting because we were just trying to get the lights back on. Is is that a Fair That's statement. a fair statement, yes, and we're actually okay. a point, um, and it's it's actually a very good point to make that um, we are, we have our head above water, we're post recovery for HR systems, we're now at a point where we want to look at how can we improve what we currently have, um, ultimately with providing better services not only to um, active employees, but also to retirees and anybody um, who uses our services, whether they be even new employees, um, candidates for um, um, positions that we have here at Team BCPS. Thank you, but we are able to leverage, or at least we hope to still leverage these systems that we put in place oh. in terms of the technologies. We're not reinventing the wheel, I guess, is what I'm saying in terms no. of the investments that we made following the the attacks. <laughs> no, we are not. Definitely not. Okay, <laughs> because it otherwise from the outside in, it might appear that we're doing things in reverse order, but we were in recovery mode and in in response mode previously. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And 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 that's a, a another point I want to stress is the output of this first phase, the documentation of existing mm -hmm. business processes. Um, is something that we're going to leverage throughout any of the um, changes, any uh, system enhancements that we're doing uh, across the HR ecosystem. Um, we, we need to have that. So this is definitely not going to be a throwaway um, solution. Okay. And final question, are we incorporating all of the public works operational efficiency recommendations for HR in um, have those the, been shared with yes. the consultants or w will they be? Yeah, that's the basis. And incorporating those. For a lot of work that we're doing, um, I can't tell you if we're doing one-to-one, -one, but definitely, because as you notice, this is um, this is a modification to existing contract. Part of the reason um, this vendor was brought on board was to look at those um, recommendations and how to incorporate that into what we're doing with the HRIS. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Agosto. Ms. Harvey, do you have any questions? Yes, I just had one. Uh, when we Go talk ahead. about what the goal is for the consulting and the as is analysis, mm -hmm. is the goal to fully automate HR processes? So, yes. Yeah, so the goal is to um, automate where we can. And let me give you an example. Um, when I talk about automation of HR processes, um, so, for example, FMLA calculations is one um, that um, is being done on a manual basis right now. Um, we can leverage existing systems, but for to do that, we actually have to define our business rules. 
Um, that is what we're doing. So we're defining what we currently have, identifying areas. Um, automation is going to come in 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 the aspect of also integration between systems. Um, that uh, at, at this point may be an manual data entry feed into an, another system. Um, so, uh, the, so the goal is to automate as much of processes as we can. There, there still will be some manual data entry. We can't get away from that. But if, you know, what we're definitely trying to do is if, if anybody's tracking data on a spreadsheet anywhere, those are areas that we're flagging right away. How can we automate those processes? Because it doesn't make sense to have that process and then have that data sit in a spreadsheet on someone's server, you know? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Agosta. Mr. McMillian, do you have any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. OK, um, the next contract is JBO-707-21 Radio Communications Minister Contract 2018. Um, this is a contract modification um, and basically um, it's an extension approval is requested to extend the contract for one year with 10 awarded vendors approved by the board on Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with uh, the Mr. next contract. I had, one. I had one. Sorry, I was typing it in the chat. Go uh, ahead, Ms. Um, this is previously a contract I believe we used Baltimore County government for, if I'm not mistaken. This is the radio contract, correct? Correct. Sorry. Correct. When you say previous, you mean... Um, Previous to this contract being in place. Correct. Yes, that's that's quite possible. I don't know that for for a fact, but I but that's possible. That certainly is possible. Yeah, and Chris, um, this is one. This, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you look at the um, the summary here, uh, this is a piggyback contract under the Maryland Department of IT contracts. We're using an existing contract, um, and also maybe I'll take this opportunity to say. Again, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a no cost mod. We're simply extending okay. the period of performance. The reason we're doing that is because of the supply chain challenges that we've had. And this is not just us, this is across the country with getting these Motorola um, or, uh, radios in. So we're we're asking for an extension of the period of performance to allow us to get those to get that equipment in. We just ran out of time. Yep, that is correct. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? I, I have a follow up. I'm I'm still confused as to whether or not we are procuring these under the same. It sounds like we're not using the Baltimore County contract, which the board had approved previously on multiple occasions. So. Right. We are this not. This contract, and I see Ms. Um, Webster is on. Ms. Webster, if you want to move forward, go forward, respond. When we when we brought this contract to the board originally back in um, 2021, at that time we stated our intention to use the Maryland Department of Information Technology contract. So we have been using the Maryland state contract since that time. I'm not sure if the contract that was done in 2016 used the Baltimore County contract, and I can look into that for you. Um, but this particular contract since 21 has used the Maryland Department of Tra Information Technology. OK, thank you. It, it may be another one for radios that I'm thinking of. I, I can look it up. Thanks, Ms. Webster. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Webster. 
Um, hearing no more questions, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Uh, for the record, Mr. McMillian, are you back in? I'm, I've called back in, but I can't get on Teams. For some reason, the microphone, I can't get it to work. But I'm, All I'm, right, I'm we can hear you. Thanks. Okay, uh, the next item is CWA-111-23, Audiovisual Hardware and Services Supplier, and this is a Meek Consortium uh, contract. This is a new cooperative contract for uh, to provide audiovisual hardware and services suppliers for the Division of uh, Information Technology. The, the contract will also be used by schools and offices through coordination with DOIT. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with 25 recommended bidders and a contract spending authority of $250,000. And Mr. Augusto is here if you have any questions. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Go Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. NTA-516-23. This is a PEPM uh, technology product line uh, contract. This is a new cooperative contract for various technology related hardware and software for the Division of Information Technology approval is requested for a two-year, 11-month contract with six recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $12,900,000. And again, Mr. Augusto is here for any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Mr. Augusto, could you explain the contract a bit more uh, in detail? Sure. So it is, I'll, I'll term it, and uh, Ms. Webster, you can slap me on my hand here if I'm wrong, but uh, I'm calling it simply a um, a schedule. So we have this ability with with uh, multiple vendors to solicit items of which we're using this for the Promethean class flow schedule that's going on the Promethean boards um, that are out in the instructional areas. We're also using this. So this is going across multiple uh, divisions and offices. So um, Office of Technology support is using the Classflow software in support of the Promethean boards. The Lightspeed internet content filtering is used by the network support services um, for the uh, desktops, uh, um, sorry, our devices that are out in the field. And then also the last one is to purchase any of the specific, um, as mentioned here, video, robotic, electronic supplies and components for schools and offices. So that is being used by the magnet schools that is using uh, being used by CTE areas to procure those one off um, solutions that are required to maintain those environments. So this is kind of a catch all for all of those IT service or IT um, components. Your um, light speed internet content filtering, is that for all laptops to to filter out content? Um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll ask Mr. Corns, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is um, the content filtering is for, is it for all or is it just for Chromebooks? Uh, Mr. Gosto, it provides content filtering for every device in BCPS, Thank including you. PCs and Chromebooks. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none. Just Mr. Mr. Could we could we get a breakdown of the estimated 1.8 million? I'm seeing about a million broken out here. Um, yeah, so um, right, because you see the 150 for the class right. software, we see that. Um, um, I I'll need to work with uh, the purchasing office um, because the other one is it's a miscellaneous so it's I can't just pull off of one we'll have to figure out um, what items could they go against this contract um, Ms. Webster this is a new contract however um, the services um, have been uh, performed or procured in the past there should be a, a another PEPM contract we that we figure back off of we have a, this is a replacement for a yes. prior PEPM contract, so we can pull information as far as which vendors um, items were purchased from. We do not have the tech we do not have the 
capability to dive into exactly what was purchased. But sure. um, but we'll know for for the Promethean class flow that's under um, one particular one and then also for content filtering um, is specific. So I would say the the remaining spend mm -hmm. on that contract would fall under this third bullet. OK, and and this does not give well, I guess it would give spending authority um, also including included under schools budgets for school purchases or does it not um, for things exactly. like the robotic supplies and and so forth that we don't have control Ms. Webster shaking her head so that would be up to schools to determine their purchases yes ma'am Th thank you I'm particularly interested in that um, and if we are expanding those types of supplies and and what purchasing power schools have to ensure equitable access to STEM equipment such as the robotics that that are mentioned here, especially as we go into budget season. <laughs> sure. Now, Ms. Hen, um, so where, whereas this is going to give spending authority, um, how schools go about making the decision determination on how they're going to spend their funds, well, I assume it's going to be a separate um, understood. Item, right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Thank you. As a follow up, you said I I recall you saying this was only for magnet schools. The no, no, not only for magnet. Not I was giving examples. No. So okay. Magnet so, CT. so this is this is a this is available. Uh, so the the groups that are particularly using this are the magnet school CTE school or um, areas within um, the schools, but um, it's not um, relegated to only those areas. So it's it's just based on the um, the scope of the equipment and software that would be needed. I see Dr. McComas is online. Did you have something to fill in? at segueing off what Ms. Hen said to make sure it's equitable across. Yes, I was I was just going to uh, support uh, Mr. Pedro and uh, Augusta, sorry, Pedro, and uh, share for an example some of their software for our CTE programs um, are um, so complex that they're not really cloud based that they, they have to be installed. So I just wanted to give an example. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Ms. The Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Okay, JBO-725-19 vehicle parts, materials, and fasteners. This is a contract modification. Uh, this will uh, provide for the continued vehicle parts, materials, and fasteners for the Office of Facility Support Services and Transportation. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $1 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $13.5 million, with 28 awarded contractors approved by the board on Tuesday, August 9, 2019. Committee members, um, please put in the chat if you have any questions or uh, raise your hand up. Any questions? Ms. Hen, do you have a question? Go ahead. I do, and, and it applies to this, but it might be a um, general one, so I only, I only need to ask it once, and that is um, why this was not rebid given the fact that we are increasing these um, spending authority. It was last brought to the board in 19. Why it was not that's put a, out for bid. That's a good question. I have uh, Ms. Webster um, um, and also Dr. Grimm. Ms. Webster, if you want to go first. Part of the reason for the increased spend authority is we are moving the purchases that were previously made under another contract for vehicle batteries onto this contract. So that's a part of the reason because the vendor is the same. Um, and having that contract already established was one reason why the increase is as much as it is. And Ms. Hen, I think, is asking about why we didn't rebid. 
So the so the second reason why that we're asking for a spending increase at this time is because of the CPI adjustments for the cost of, of vehicle parts because of due to inflation. So I do believe that this con that this contract will will be up soon. We just need um, an, an additional spend authority to, as Ms. Webster said, fold in some of the the uh, the batteries in particular that we bought under a previous contract into this one as well. And and uh, Ms. Hen, just uh, uh, there are 26, 28 vendors, so it's it's not like this is a one off. This is this is there's multiple folks out there that are um, that are meeting our needs. OK, that that is helpful. Um, thank you. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. KSH-306-19 towing services. Um, this contract modification will provide continued towing services for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $30,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $330,000 with one awarded contract contractor approved by the Board of Education on December 11th, 2018. Um, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to highlight is down in the description, um, the uh, the modification will uh, is a result of an increased number of computer related failures in our diesel powered school buses and heavy uh, duty uh, trucks. And they're hard to predict when you have those types of, 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 of problems. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? I don't see any in the chat. I do have a you kind of answered my question was we've spent almost three hundred thousand dollars in towing from in the last four years. 2018. It, well, if you look at we've spent yeah lifetime contract uh, two hundred fifty five thousand nine hundred seventy five dollars is what we spent uh, to date through um, 12 11 2018. Ms. Joes, we we average about fifty to fifty-five thousand dollars a year in towing. Um, some of some of the tows that we have to 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 do for some of these larger vehicles can be a bill of between three and six thousand dollars for a single tow. So in the in the scope of the number of school buses that we have and large uh, trucks like some of our dump trucks, um, the bill is is relatively small compared to our fleet size. Um, but it is a, it, it, it's not an insignificant amount. Yes, that was my question. It's quite a significant amount. And do you have a breakdown from previous years of how much we've spent in towing? Is this uh, something that preventative maintenance could help? So it's less of a, of a preventative maintenance issue and, and more um, accidents more than anything else. And as Mr. Hartlove said, some of the complications with the, the diesel um, emissions of our school buses and some of the other vehicles that we have to make sure that we're EPA compliant. So when those fail, we need to, um, you know, we need to, to, to get them towed. We need to get the vehicles towed. Um, but when we are in accidents too, depending on where we are, we, we need to get the, the whether it's a dump or a large truck or a school bus towed. Thank you, Dr. Grimm. Uh, committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Um, the next contract is CWA-114-23, electric electrification of school buses. Um, this is a a uh, new cooperative contract to provide for the lease purchase of electrical school buses and installation of required infrastructure for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five year, one month contract with one option to extend for five years with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $43,214,730. Um, down in the description, um, the 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 important important points we want to make with this is that uh, grant funding from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, clean school bus grant um, uh, may be awarded 
uh, by BCPS on an annual basis. So uh, the goal there is to um, cover the difference in cost between the electrical, the, the electric buses and our traditional diesel buses. So if this works as we want it to work, there will be uh, no, no additional uh, cost uh, uh, for us. Um, they also cover the uh, infrastructure um, that that you need at the at the lots um, for for the electrical uh, buses. And also one other thing is I'm sorry I cut you okay. off. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's I was going to say one other thing is is that this is uh, um, it, this contract will support the requirement that all replacement bus buses have zero emissions starting in FY25. Thank you. This requirement is from EPA. Well, I think the requirement is from the from the state of Maryland. I think the grant is from the EPA and Dr. Grimm has much better handle on this, um, much more down in the details than I am. That is Dr. correct. The, the, that is correct. The state pat the state passed legislation for zero emissions, the target of zero emission school buses. Um, hopefully by 2025 um, with the new purchase of buses or replacement buses. Again, that's a target goal, um, but the EPA provides uh, grants based on certain criteria. Uh, we have applied for that. We are cur currently on a waiting list and did not receive the grants from the first round of funding, um, but the, the monies that have been set aside have grant funding available uh, for up to 25 school buses a year for the next five years. Thank you. I know um I have always pushed for electrification of school buses, and uh, so I'm glad to see this contract. Ms. Hen, do you have a question? I do. Um, and Mr. Grimm, you, or Dr. Grimm, you answered one of them, and that is um, the first round of grant funding. I heard you say we did not receive. Is that correct? But there's additional grant funding we may be eligible to receive? That is correct. The only LEA in the state of Maryland that received the EPA's grant funding this year was Baltimore City. We are on a waiting list for them and we can continue to apply, which we will do uh, next spring. As Mr. Hartlove said, this, this plan allows us to enter into the foray of electric buses. Um, with this, uh, if this contract and this spend authority is approved, um, we will acquire five school buses for fiscal year 2024 and then we plan to um, if this works out to procure uh, up to 25 buses for each of the subsequent four years after that uh, the way this contract is structured it does give us the opportunity year by year to determine if this is the proper course for bcps okay is there a need to move forward entering into this contract before we secure the grant funding this spring uh, there isn't there isn't a need what what this contract at this time allows us to do um, as Mr. Hartlove said is that we're we're trying to basically have a process where it's it's a break a break even analysis or as close to a break even analysis as we can make so the cost of ownership for a school bus is around four hundred thousand dollars through its life uh, a conventional school bus cost us around one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to procure an electric bus cost us approximately $370,000 to procure. By entering into this contract, um, we're on a, in a lease purchase agreement um, with, a, with a company, with a vendor um, that has a track rec record with uh, this work. And so we believe that over the course of time, again, the cost of ownership, which includes fuel and maintenance and upkeep and so forth, um, we believe that that over the course of that 12 year life of the vehicle that we will roughly break even based on our uh, analysis. Right, the EPA we'll grant would only help us in the future. OK, so you're if, if I'm understanding that correctly, we would still be at an, a break even for our operating costs. Um, at present without the grant. That is that is correct and that is the goal. Thank you, Dr. Graham. Okay, no. uh, Mr. McMillan, no do you have any questions? Mr. I had one no, final question and that is how many buses do we have to replace by fiscal year 25 in order to be compliant with so state law? We, 
it, it's not a matter. It's it's the um, it's the goal of the of the, the way the legislation is written. Um, it, it's it's a matter of procuring new buses if the system can afford it. As I said, because these vehicles cost three times the amount of a con of a conventional bus, um, will only be I believe the fourth or fifth district in the state um, that has electric buses in in fiscal year 2024. And with five buses, will be I believe the second largest um fleet with only five so we are we are on our way toward better compliance um but the way that the legislation is is written is it is not absolutely mandated that this happen by 2025. correct but if we were to replace it i what i'm asking is how many are scheduled for replacement as of now by fy25 so we we will replace approximately 70 buses each school year over the next three years um, before 2025. The, the, the issue with electric buses and any alternative fuel school buses is that they do not have the range um, to handle all of the, the routes and trips that, that we have. So we know that, that that is somewhat of an unrealistic goal for us to completely electrify or provide um, an alternative school vehicle for our entire fleet at this time. Dr. Graham, if I may interrupt, your Description says 104 buses over a five year period with the lease. You just stated 75 buses a year that comes up to approximately 450 some buses in five years. That's correct so, because we will be we will be supplementing or augmenting um, this electrification process with our conventional buses. This will not cease our our purchase of conventional buses. This will augment our fleet so that we can work toward electrification. Thank you. And uh, will you guys be doing any post uh, emission study on the reduction in BCPS by uh, moving over to electrification, the reduction in emissions? Since we uh, do. I, I, I don't believe that our office has the capacity to do that. I, I don't know whether we'll be working with the state. I'm not sure if M.MBA will be working with jurisdictions to, to measure that or not, Ms. Jones, but that's a great question. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jones, I have a follow up to your questions. And, and I, I, rather than taking the time, rather than taking the time away from our meeting, um, as a committee, may we request that we receive a follow-up report from Dr. Grimm before moving forward with a recommendation on this contract, so that the board can receive a full report on the electrification and the implications, um, particularly how it will affect our routes. Um, Given the sensitivities and concerns we have towards maintaining the the gains we've we've seen in transportation, I would hate to move backwards on this. And and while I support moving forward, I I think there's a lot lot of questions that the board will have. And I'm, Ms. Dr. Grimm, if you could provide some responses on the study that was done, the break even analysis. I don't see this as something that would actually hold us back. It actually will modernize our fleet, and I think that's the way to go. Uh, but I will uh, facilitate that request, Ms. Hen. Uh, I do want to ask Ms. Harvey, since she's been quiet, if she has any questions. I want to make sure everybody gets time. Ms. Harvey, do you have any questions? Not at this time. All right, thank you. Mr. Hartlow, if you could move forward with the next contract, please. Sure. Um, the next contract is GDA-330-22 Print Goods and Services. This contract modification will add one regional distribution dealer to act on behalf of the awarded vendor. Um, so there's no change in dollars. It's just adding a potential vendor. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Um, um, actually, uh, Mr. Uh, Dixit is going to Mr. pick Dixit. up here. <laughs> Go ahead. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Good evening and Happy New Year to all of you. My name is Pete Dixit for the benefit of new board members. I'm executive director for facilities management and strategic planning. The next contract is GDA. 301-22, and that's for third-party elevator inspection. 
It's a routine preventive maintenance service and a state requirement. The request is for extending the contract for one year and increasing the spending authority by $80,000. So the revised total contract spending authority will be $186,667. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA-117-22 for operable wall system inspections, preventive maintenance, repair, and replacement at various location. Uh, it'll pro this, uh, this is a uh, extension for two months and uh, this will provide the continued installation of electrically operated polling walls in different schools and align the expiration date to match the lead agency and update the list of awarded vendors. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA-112-23 for HVAC products, installation, labor-based solution, and related products. The request is for $10 million. The term of the contract is four years, seven months, and they are different. The name of the vendor here is uh, Fame US Incorporated. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. <laughs> Mr. McMillian, did you have a question? I heard saw your thing blinking. Just a minute. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, can you hear me? No, I don't have a question, but can you hear me? Yes. I can. Okay. No, I don't have yes. a question. Thank you. Thank you. The, ne the next contract is JBO-717-23 uh, facilities, MRO, industrial and building related supplies and equipment. Uh, the contract term is three year, 10 months. And this contract will provide for HVAC supplies uh, for schools and for career and technology education and fine arts. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is NTA-511-23 floor tiles and associated material. It's a new competitively bid contract for vinyl tiles, carpet, um, uh, power based molding, flooring transition strips, and other necessary items. Recommended bidder uh, and contract is spending authority of $400,000 for a term of five year. So this is going to be approximately $80,000 per year. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract, ASI-801-22, is for professional testing services. Uh, this contract, the term is, this is for extension of one year, and it will provide the ability for our construction folks to have the testing services for capital projects. Typical testing services are backfill placement, compaction testing, concrete slump, air contact, content, temperature and placement testing and inspection. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, please proceed with the next contract, Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is for replacement of Lansdowne High School. In the interest of time, I'll do what I have done in the past. I have summarized uh, 13 different packages. 
for the construction of Lansdowne High School, items 17 through 29, and the contract number is CWA-102-23, I will name the package, I'll name the contract amount, number of bidders, and the name of the contractor. So with that, it's site work, package number 2A. The uh, amount is $22 million, $566,720. All of these amounts include construction contingencies. There were five bids received and the lowest bidder is Urban and Zinc Contractor. The second package, 2B, is for demolition and removal of hazardous material. It is, uh, the lowest bid is 2,354,000. There were five bidders, and the low, lowest bidder is Interior Specialties DBA ISA Demolition. Uh, the next contract is concrete contractor. It's 3A, package 3A. The lowest amount is 7,806,715,000. There were five bids. GLB concrete is the lowest bidder. The next package is for masonry, 4A, packet 4A. The lowest amount is $10,195,900. There were three bids, and Karen Masonry of Maryland Incorporated is the lowest bidder. The next package is a steel 5A. Lowest bidder is $14,316,800. There were four bids. Uh, SA Halak Ironworks is the name of contractor. The next package is General Trades, package 6A. The lowest bid is 18,006,629. There were five bids, and Oak Contracting Incorporated is the lowest bidder. The next package is for roofing, 7A. The lowest bid, including contingencies, is $12,662,100. There were four bidders, and the lowest bid is uh, uh, coal Roofing Company. The uh, next contract is Windows and Storefront, package 8A. The lowest amount, lowest bid amount is 8,013,500. There were three bids. And the name of the contractor, Z Fire Aluminum LLC. The next package is drywall, framing, and finishes, packet, package 9A. The lowest bid is 14,003,000, three bids. The lowest bidder is Mount Everest Construction Incorporated. Uh, there were three bids for that. The painting bid, 9C, is the next package. The amount is $931,700. There was only one bid for that contract, but it's the smallest of the contract of all of the package. And the contract is NLP Enterprises. Food Services is package 11A. The lowest bidder is $1,860,203. There were three bids. And Singer Ashland is the name of the contractor. Mechanical package, uh, 15A. The lowest is $31 million, 231,200. There were three bids, and Towson Mechanical is the lowest bidder. And the final is the electrical and low voltage, package number 16A. And the amount is $19,575,490. There were five bids, five bidders and Electrical Incorporated is the lowest bidder. We are requesting your approval for all the packages. The details of the amount are tabulated in each board exhibit. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions on the package for Lansdowne? 
Hearing none. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. Mr. Hartlow, did you see the chat? Ms. Hen has a comment for you. If you could verify okay. that. OK, will do. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is GDA-303-23 for Lock Raven High School. Uh, it's a boiler and chiller replacement. It's a construction contract. Competitive bids are solicited to replace two boilers and two chillers and the tooling and the cooling towers at Lock Raven High School. Bids were received and approval is requested for a contract with the lowest responsible bidder and a total contract is spending of two million six hundred fifty two thousand four hundred thirty dollars. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Uh, hearing none, Ms. Hen, did you want to um, state your question to Ms. Hartlow for the record? Yes, thank you, Ms. Joes. Um, Mr. Hartlove, if you wouldn't um, please check the numbers on the PEPM contract technology product line, NTA 516-23. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA-110-23 for Lock Raven Technical Academy. It's a boiler replacement. Uh, competitive bids were solicited to replace all five boilers at Lock Raven Technical Academy. Request is for approval of $677,600. And please note that these are grant fund. The funding source is grant funds. Uh, and the work includes replacement of all five boilers. There were seven bids received for this project. The lowest bidder is Tenpair Company and the amount including contingency is $677,600. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the final item I have is really not a contract. It's a right of way agreement. MWE-805-23 New North Middle School. As you know, it's under construction. The right of way agreement will allow BGE to install a new BGE module on our property. And it's, it's, it's an above ground and closed design for BGE switching purposes. As part of the process, anytime there is an agreement or right of way, with BGE or any other organization, board approval is required. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions on the BGE right away? Hearing none. Ms. Joes, I had a quick question back to Lock Ravens, Boiler and Chiller. It's a two second question for Mr. Dixit. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, hey, Mr. Dixit, Happy New Year. Same to you. Thank you. Um, the boiler and chiller, those are not optional um, replacements or replacements that can be deferred, correct? I would assume. That's correct. OK, so the fact that um, the system is recommending um, demolishing Lock Raven and rebuilding it is irrelevant. We still need to replace the boiler and chiller. So any project that is being considered right now, um, it's going to take several years. As you know, some of the other projects, the, the Lansdown one, we have been talking for a long time uh, and still it will take several years to complete it. Same as the Lock Raven. While we don't know the future of that project at this time, but even if it was to be approved today, it will take good four, five, six years, depending on a lot of other factors. So. Uh, this is an operational issue when we talk about electrical mechanical systems. Uh, we look at the probability of failure because if that happens, then we don't have too many options. Understood. So thank you. Hey. 
Thank you, Mr. Dixit. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 31 be moved to the full board for approval. Um, the question Smith, is on the recommended. Separate, may we separate two? Um, item 8 and item 5, unless Mr. Hartlove has um, new numbers for 5 or can answer the questions about clarifying the numbers on B5. Yeah, on B5, like we can have two. some. Excuse me. Oh, please go ahead. Um, I was going to say on, on we will have uh, some numbers to you tomorrow on on uh, on number five. OK, then may we not vote on number five? And I'd also like to separate B8. Ms. Hen, you want to separate out? Could you put the contract numbers that you're separating out? I believe it's C5 and C8. Uh, B5 and B8, I can put those in the chat if yes. you'd like. And since we're getting new numbers on B5, um, we might want to postpone or not vote on that one. Thank you. Um, uh, I, so I have a question. I'm sorry. This is uh, Ms. Harvey. Go ahead, Ms. Harvey. Thank you. I just, uh, Ms. Hen, could you speak to um, why you'd like to separate separate out B8? Was there a specific we electrification? We don't, yes. we don't speak to separating items out for right. vote. Okay. Ms. Harvey, we can still vote on that just because she's separating. Um, she that's, might choose that's to. That's fine. Vote. Yeah. I was just trying to make sure I understood every the, everything that people were saying, but that's fine. Thanks. We'll vote on that too. So thank you. Um, so I will. Ms. Hen, did you put that in the chat? The I did. Numbers. Okay. And I'll speak to it when we vote on it, Ms. Harvey. Uh, you don't have to speak to it now. We'll, we can speak to it at the board meeting. Um, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that contracts one through B4, contracts B6 through B7, and contracts B9 through B31 be moved to the full board for approval. Do I have a motion? I'll move the, the motion. Do we have a second? Can I have a second, please? This is Nobody Mrs. wants a Harvey, second? Yes, I second. Thank you, Ms. This Harvey. Um, Ms. Fayer, please take the roll call vote. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Thank you. Um, Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Mr. Ms. McMillian, begin. Yes. Favor is three. May I now have a motion to approve or move contract B5 to the full board for approval? So moved, Ms. Joes. Do I have a second? This is Ms. Harvey, I second. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Um, Ms. Faye, please take a roll call vote. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Han? Abstain. Ms. Jose? Yes. 
Should I call Mr. McMillian if he's not? Yeah, yeah. Can, can, can you hear me? I'm going back and forth on these phones oh, yeah. and computers. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Yes, and my answer was yes to, to the previous question too. I'm very mm -hmm. sorry. I'm just, I'm frustrated with these machines. <laughs> That's okay, Mr. Mr. McMillian. Um, please note that for the record, Ms. Faya, his vote was a yes on the previous motion as well. Will do. Favor is three. Contract B5 will be moved to the full board for approval. May I have a motion to approve contract B8 to move to the full board? I'll move, Ms. Joes. Do I have a second? Second, Ms. Harvey. Thank, thank you, Ms. Harvey. Uh, Ms. Fayer, please take the roll call vote for contract B8. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hen? No. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Chose? Yes. The motion okay. carries. Contracts B1 through B31 will be moved to the full board for approval. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs>